Good morning. Whoa. Okay. Uh, there's like very few of us. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for everyone that came. Thanks for coming. Uh, obviously, today is communion day. I just want to say good morning to everybody. Happy birthday. And thank you for everything you guys do. Honestly, it doesn't go unnoticed. It's definitely appreciated. And without your leadership, this place would be, well, unexistent. <laughs> it would be. So thank you. And uh, if you're here for Bible studies on Wednesday, please tune in. We've had some good discussions. And then one of the things that was takeaway for me, which I think is important, I know that today's or we're coming up on elections and stuff like that. And in our Bible study, we were able to not just look at the character of God, but to look at the character of the one who hates God and everything that is associated with God. And I think that's important. I hear, uh, or I've heard a uh, clever uh, saying that, you know, if you want to spot a counterfeit, you have to study the authentic piece. So for people that counterfeit dollars and stuff, they don't study counterfeits, they study, you know, the original. And I think there's truth to that. I really do. When it comes to people, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, and where I'm going with this is spotting, you know, fact from fiction, truth from lies. That kind of becomes a little bit more increasingly difficult to do. Um, and there's so many things that you're probably going to see and you're probably going to hear, not just regarding elections, but moving forward in our country and around the world. And it's important that we don't censor ourselves as a church, at least amongst each other. If we have questions, concerns, comments, or a viewpoint, it is important, I feel, that we share that with each other just because, you know, God may be reaching to me in one way and pulling at me to look at some things and perhaps I get a little, you know, half degree of, 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 of a bigger perspective. God sees 360, you know, I myself may see one degree. But if I combine my one degree with your one degree, well, then maybe together we see a little bit more. And that's the only thing that I wanted to say this morning, is that we shouldn't censor ourselves. We should feel free to discuss some of these things respectfully, but openly. If we can't do that together, how are we going to share what we want to share with others, right? Which is the gospel. Stop. That's it. That's all I was going to say. Goodness, what can I say after that? Uh, let's say you're welcome and thank you. How's that? Maybe that's not the right order, but uh, it's all part of it. So um, I'll say for to make kind of a beginning here. Say welcome to Phoenix Seventh-day Baptist Church. I know we who are here are grateful to, to be together as we just, just heard a couple minutes ago. And uh, so let's let's spend this time now in worship. And uh, we have special things to do today in worship. So let's start with prayer. Father God, we are just, just so thankful to you that you have created this church <laughs> that, of course, as one part of your whole church uh, all over the world, thank you that we are a part of that. We're grateful for those you bring together in local places to serve you and to look to you for the blessing that you have. So. Father, just accept our worship today, and we pray that, that we can really worship in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, let's have a song. All right, good morning. Our first song today will be 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, All My Soul. Go ahead and please stand with me. Lyrics are in your bulletin. Yep. 
Good morning, everybody. Today, our scripture reading is going to be Romans 14, 14 to 21. I know and am convicted in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but to him who thinks anything to be unclean to him is unclean. For it is for if because of food your brother is hurt, you are no longer walking according to love. Do not destroy with your food him for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what is for you a good thing be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who is in way ser- in this way serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then we per- pursue the things that the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. Do not tear down the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are clean, but they are evil for the man who eats and gives offense. It is good not to eat meat or to drink wine, but or to do anything by which your brother stumbles. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for everybody here. I'm thankful for the blessings that you've given us. I'm thankful that you are guiding us and leading us. I pray that you would be with the people who are not here. I pray that you would keep Ardith and Grace safe. I pray that you would be with John and Annie, keep them happy and healthy. I pray that you would put your healing hands on Justin and Rich, and I pray that you would um, bless everybody who could not be here today, keep them healthy and happy and safe. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, this is the second church I've been in where we have lunch together every week. Um, I think that's actually pretty rare in Christian churches. Many churches will have a you know, something they might call a fellowship lunch or whatever they might call it, uh, once a month, if that often. We're doing, you know, we've been doing this a few years now, so, uh, you know, we've eaten together many times, and it's been a blessing. You know, with all these meals that we've had together, there's one thing we've never done, and that's have a good old-fashioned food fight. Uh, now, I'm not suggesting that we should do that today, and certainly not with the food that's over here. Goodness, I remember a movie I think I saw a long, long time ago when probably when I was a teenager, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember much about it. All I remember is there was a scene where a couple of the main characters were eating together, and they just, I don't know who started it, but they just ended up throwing food at each other. And it got, of course, pretty wild, made a huge mess. Looked like a lot of fun, and I suppose it would be until you have to clean it up. But of course, some food fights don't involve throwing food. There are other ways to do it. People sometimes disagree about food. Christians can even disagree about what kinds of food are okay to eat and what are not okay. We've done a little bit of that here. Not much, but some. Today we will eat and drink together again, not only at lunchtime, but right here in just a few minutes in the Lord's Supper. It's one of the privileges and the blessings that we have as Christians and as members together in the church. Another one of those privileges and blessings is baptism. Um, You know, not really going to get into that in detail today, but, um, you know, like most other Baptist churches, of course, we have just those two special things that we do. Uh, Now, we usually call them ordinances, 
rather than sacraments. Not quite sure why. But we have only those two, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Now, don't get me started on baptism. There have been many disagreements about that over the centuries. If you can believe it, even more than about the Lord's Supper. Maybe some other time we'll think about baptism. But today, it's the Lord's Supper. And again, I'll say that it's a privilege and a blessing to do this together. At least I certainly hope we are thinking of it that way. I hope we don't think of it as something to fight about. <laughs> and that's what Romans chapter 14 is all about. If you still have that there, right? We're going to look at it a little bit. In the Roman church, just like every local church since then, they had some Christians who were, I guess you, uh, you'd say more mature, and some Christians who were less mature. In this letter, Paul talked about those two groups of people, and he called them the strong and the weak. And his basic teaching there was that the stronger, more mature Christians need to be careful how they live so that they don't offend weaker Christians, or the way he said it, cause them to stumble. Um, he gave two examples of this in Romans 14. First was the question of whether certain kinds of food are okay or not okay, and also the question of one day of the week being special or all days of the week being equal. That's another issue maybe we can get into sometime. One day special or all days equal, but not today. Since this is the Lord's Supper today, maybe we better think about the food issue and what Paul had to say about it. We heard this scripture earlier, read from Romans 14. Now, I can remember back when, when Becky and I were in the Bay Area Church, there were lots of times when we had to be sensitive. I mean, not just us, of course, but, but everybody. There were times we had to be sensitive about this food issue in the church. I guess that's going to happen sooner or later in a church that has lunch together every week. Sometimes the ones who who got the food ready would, would put a little note next to a certain dish that, that might say uh, contains meat or contains pork. Um, and I've seen similar notes next to some food dishes here. I believe that's an example of doing it right, of being sensitive to each other. When it comes to the question of what's okay and what isn't okay to eat, most Christians fall into, I'm kind of overgeneralizing here, but I'd say most Christians fall into one of two groups. Some people think, what's the big deal? <laughs> food is food. The Bible says, eat what's set before you. It all comes from God, so just be grateful and eat it. Eat it with thanks. But other people think we need to be very careful what we eat because not all kinds of food are good for you. The Bible has food laws for a reason. So how do you deal with opposite beliefs and still manage to eat together without having a food fight. I think we see some answers here in Romans 14. The most important thing is in verse 19. Peace among believers and edifying one another. 
A lot of versions say edify. That word just means uh, Christians encouraging each other and building each other up in the faith, peace among believers, serving each other. These are more important than food. Don't ever let a food issue become a food fight. Love, peace among ourselves is much more important. Verse, 20, uh, verse 21 has another thing. Um, don't eat or drink in a way that offends your brother or sister in Christ. Don't try to push your own opinions or belief onto someone else. But as verse 22 says, which we didn't read earlier, but it's there, <laughs> keep it between you and God. Goodness, maybe we should have read the whole chapter. Uh, there's another important thing back in verse 6. Again, we didn't read that before, so let's read it now. Go to Romans 14, 6. Just going to read the last half of that verse. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. Whatever we do or don't do, do it for God. Even our disagreements about things like food can glorify God because it shows that we love him and we love each other. Now, back at the beginning of this chapter, Paul said that this issue is a disputable matter, also translated doubtful thing. The word disputable, obviously, means able to be disputed. In other words, it's okay to dispute. It's not an earth-shaking thing if we disagree. Amazing, isn't it? Food is not a salvation issue. <laughs> if we need to disagree, let's disagree. Only let's do it in love without having a food fight. Goodness, if you want to disagree, <laughs> right here on this table are some disagreements that we could have. I mean, does it have to be bread with absolutely no yeast, or will any bread do the job? I mean, bread is bread, right? Is it okay to use grape juice, or does it have to be genuine wine? Bible mentions wine, I guess, one of their common beverages. <laughs> Back in the Bay Area Church, some people could have argued that it should be Napa Valley wine. You know, our, our church there was about 60 miles from Napa Valley. Another thing, shouldn't we have just one loaf, and we just pass it around, and we all break off a piece? And shouldn't we have just one cup that we all drink from? So, are we going to have a food fight today? Right now, we could do that. But wouldn't it be better if we just eat and drink out of a common love for the Lord Jesus and love for each other, which is more important than any disputable matter. If you're up for that, I invite you to put aside any disagreements that we might have and focus on the one thing that is really important, and that's Jesus' suffering and death in our place and the eternal life that he gives us. No food fights today. Let's eat and drink as people who are one in Christ. And if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus, I invite you to take part. Before we do that, let's just think for a minute about the 
about the bread and, and the cup set before us here. On that night, when Jesus told his disciples and his church to do this thing, he took bread and he said, this is my body. Then he took the cup and said, this is my blood. Well, naturally, <laughs> this has been interpreted in different ways. Some churches say it means this becomes my body and becomes my blood. Other churches say it means this represents or symbolizes my body and blood. So, who's right? Sounds like it could turn into another food fight. I'm sorry to say, sometimes it has. But what is it here that is crystal clear? One thing is the word my. My body, my blood, my is Jesus. He gave us this meal to point to him, to remind us what he did for us. He said it very simply, take and eat. This is my body. Broken bread should remind us of his suffering and dying for us. Then he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. This reminds us that the life is in the blood, and blood makes atonement for sin. Let's pray. Lord, again we come to this special meal, this special opportunity to worship you, to renew our commitment to you and to each other. Father, I just... I just pray for unity among us so that we can agree on who you are and what you did for us. Bless this bread and this cup that help us to understand your love and your sacrifice for us. Father, thank you for Jesus' death that applies to every one of us, to people from all groups and backgrounds, all being made one in Christ. Thank you for saving us through Jesus' death. Amen. Again, Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. You know, the devil would love to have us fighting about food, or about anything else for that matter. Uh, let's not give him the satisfaction. God gave us this meal to unify us, not divide us. So let's, let's keep praying the prayer that Jesus prayed that same night, that we may all be one in Christ. Let's finish by singing a song that's just nothing but praise to him. Thank you, Steve. Our final song today, please stand as we sing Wonderful, Merciful Savior.